Hello, and welcome to Cyber, an interview series presented by the women of Kivu. Conversations featuring phenomenal women within the cyber industry. Our mission is to inform and empower women within the cyber sphere. We're excited to showcase these incredible women and have them speak about their journey within the cyberspace. Today with us, we have Alicia Petrino. Uh, she joins us as the CISO from McGraw Hill. Alicia, thank you for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about your role and a little bit about McGraw Hill? Sure, thanks, Bridget. Um, McGraw Hill has been around for over 130 years, uh, started as an educational textbook publisher, and we've evolved to uh, digital products as well as print uh, to the uh, higher ed and K through 12 markets. And I am the uh, CISO, I report to the Chief Operating Officer. I manage a team of engineers and analysts, and we're responsible for the day-to-day -day cybersecurity of corporate and customer data, as well as McGraw-Hill's internal systems and customer-facing digital products. Now, you and I have known each other for a couple of years, and you have an interesting path to the role of CISO. Can you uh, describe for us the path to rising to CISO? Well, I certainly had a non-traditional career path for cybersecurity. I actually started in human resources. I was working with the IT department. I worked closely with the IT leadership department and just became more and more interested in the work they were doing. It really was fascinating to me. And then I took on more roles in communications and project management. And a couple of years ago, I was uh, kind of thrown into cybersecurity during an incident where I was on point to communicate between the cybersecurity team and our leadership and board about what was going on during an incident. Following that, I got involved in project management in a, a very um, uh, complex multi-phase program uh, remediating cybersecurity over two years at McGraw-Hill. And I became so involved with cybersecurity and the day-to-day -day activities of the team that it really made sense at some point for me to manage the team. And then as cybersecurity has become more and more important, eventually I was named as CISO. Wow, that's a, uh, that, that is an interesting path. Now, you, you started out in HR and it must be a real sea change in your, you know, what you see in your responsibilities. What do you think the most interesting part of your job is? Technology is always changing um, and cybersecurity attacks are becoming more sophisticated every day. It certainly keeps things interesting. And I think it's the um, personal impact of uh, cybersecurity that makes it so serious and so uh, important. If a company um, you know, breaches personal data, that, that impacts a person, not just their, their career, their corporate you know, data, but their, their selves personally, their family. So I think it's something that really resonates with people and um, that uh, importance is really, um, makes me really embrace it. Now, interestingly, I think cyber has changed. One of the things you find interesting is how it changes, but I think in the last two years, um, cybercrime is really on an uptick, particularly for private institutions, educational institutions. Do you think the role of CISO has changed significantly over the last two years? Absolutely. I think the CISO role was um, probably more reactionary in the past and kind of a, a role and a, a function within corporate technology. And it's become much more proactive um, and important to the entire organization. So I can say day to day, I interact with just about every uh, function within the company, every business unit to proactively address potential cybersecurity issues, whether it's our legal department looking at uh, vendor security or working with our marketing and sales teams on um, communicating our cybersecurity uh, protections for our customers. Now, compound question, and forgive me in advance. So McGraw-Hill works a lot with educational institutions. And in your perspective, what do you think some of the biggest privacy and um, cyber risks educational institutional face? And the compound part, do you think the rush to remote has a amplified some of those issues? Absolutely. I think in the K through 12 space, 
we're dealing with uh, school networks that were never intended to be open to the internet, um, devices, laptops that um, were not patched or um, ever intended to be used anywhere besides a classroom. You have some schools that can't provide laptops and you have um, you know, students dialing in from you know, all sorts of uh, you know, different uh, you know, hardware. Um, ransomware is a risk not only for schools, but higher ed institutions as well. And these schools are just becoming an increasing target and it's extremely uh, disruptive and problematic for these institutions. Yeah, we see it a lot here at Kiva when we're um, helping serve some of these companies who are affected and, well, institutions mostly. The struggle we often see with new technology is we often have to balance the advancements of innovation and the concerns over protecting private information and cybersecurity concerns. How do you think technology companies can better balance that risk? And what can an educational institution, for example, do to partner with a company that is taking the right steps to protect private information and protect um, have security measures in place? We really have to take a, a pragmatic approach, uh, weighing the risks, the likelihood, and the impact. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach to cybersecurity. Um, I think it's important that you partner with vendors that do their due diligence and take cybersecurity seriously. Everyone wants that personalized um, experience, that you know, custom experience with technology. And there's risk, obviously, associated with that. Um, because technology is an ecosystem of microservices delivered by various providers, nobody's doing everything themselves, it's important that you vet those providers. Ask them, do they have a dedicated cybersecurity team? What is their security monitoring policy? Do they follow a framework like NIST to maintain industry best practices? It's important that they take cybersecurity seriously. Okay, now pivoting a little, um, because this is presented by the, the women at Kivu. Um, we want to get your opinion and get some uh, responses from you about trends with women in cyber. Um, now, first on trends, what trends do you and changes do you expect to see in the next five to 10 years within cyber? I think cybersecurity just becomes more and more important. Um, I just think it's a, an area of growth. Um, privacy legislation continues to grow. Uh, we see more and more state-sponsored attacks. Uh, the complexity of cyber attacks, I think it is just more and more important. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, as I've said before, um, I really think where we are with privacy and security, we're almost like a teenager. We're, we're not in the infant stage, we're growing, but we're not quite adults yet. And we have a long way to go in our maturation. But, you know, the steps we're taking, I think, are important steps and important problems to solve. Now, cyber is a spectrum. I always say that it could be legal. It could be um, the role of CISO or it could be highly technical. Do you recommend that do you think that more women should consider a career in cyber? Absolutely. Um, I think there are so many opportunities within cybersecurity because it is a growing area and it's become more and more important. I think anybody who's looking to grow their career or look for a new opportunity, cybersecurity is you know, certainly where it's at. And I think there are a number of ways, um, as you mentioned, to get involved and you know, to add value within the cybersecurity space. And how would you encourage uh, a young person to start building their career in cyber? Just insert yourself, lean in. You don't have to be technical. Don't think about the skills you don't have, but think about the skills and the experience you do have that you can apply. There's always something you can do that adds value and it's never too late to reinvent yourself. Yeah, I think having an interest and understanding what your real skills are, are the two biggest things you need to have because you can teach yourself a lot of this stuff and you're, it's, it's a broad spectrum cyber. So there's a need for all sorts of skill sets. Now in that spectrum, um, a lot of people are highly technical and I find a lot of them don't have the skill set that someone from HR might have. 
what soft skills do you think are important for cybersecurity professionals to continue to develop? Communication is key. Um, relationship management, being able to influence, which extremely important in cybersecurity. If you don't have the hands on technical skills to remediate a vulnerability and nobody has the ability to do everything themselves, you have to be able to influence. So communication is absolutely critical. Thank you, Alicia. I, you. I don't want to eat up any more of your time because I think you and I could talk forever. Um, thank you to McGraw-Hill for allowing Alicia to talk with us and join us again for the next episode of Cyber. Thank you for joining us today and stay informed by tuning in next time. If you'd like to know more about Kivu and all our services, please visit our website at www.kivuconsulting.com.